A couple years back on Mock Rock, I made a video talking about 10 extremely underrated attacks in Smash Ultimate. I always plan to revisit the topic someday, and now that I've got a second channel where I host top 10 lists, get a time as any. So much like with the original video, this isn't really intended to be a super competitive list, it's more just an excuse to highlight 10 moves that I think are powerful or interesting, but for one reason or another, don't get a lot of attention from the community. There are way more than 10 moves I could have picked for this video, so if you think you've got a good candidate, feel free to leave a comment and hey, maybe it'll show up in a future episode. For now, let's get into it. We're starting off with a move that I think encapsulates the spirit of this video perfectly, Meta Knight's Drill Rush. For a long time, I largely wrote this move off. You know, it's obviously a pretty good recovery move, goes a very long distance and you can angle it, that's great. If you want to get a little fancier with it, you can call it a kamikaze kill, that's nice, but it's a pretty straightforward and unsafe move, right? It's not very fast to start up, it's not very good in neutral, it's just pretty limited. That was my thinking for a long time, but full credit to the Meta Knight player base because they've managed to really innovate with this move, which makes sense on a character where extensive labbing is essentially mandatory to play them. Playing with drag down multi hits is nasty, and Drill Rush is just so well set up to abuse that in so many different ways. You can keep things low risk and stay on stage and just angle it down, in which case you won't go off the ledge, but your sword tip will stick way below it. It's legitimately one of the most disgusting two frames in the game, it just lingers for so long. I talked about going for kamikaze kills, and yeah, you can do that, but there are a lot of times where you can make the same kind of read as you would for a kamikaze, but provided Meta Knight is even moderately close to the stage or his opponent is high into the air, he can still make it back. That's a privilege very few characters have. That pop-up property is really powerful and it activates on the ground and on other objects in addition to opponents, so there are a lot of ways you can make use of it. You don't even need to be getting this pop-up or trading with other characters multi-hits though, because you can interrupt the drill rush partway through and start high and grab the ledge, which covers a lot of options the opponent's going to use to try and get back to stage, and that's still an interrupted multi-hit, they still get spiked downwards. And you can go down shockingly far with this, you're able to hold down past the point where you would normally auto grab the ledge for a decent amount of time. Even its recovery duty is better than it first appears, which is saying a lot because this is one of the best pure recovery moves in the game to begin with. But on top of going ridiculously far, being very controllable, having a persistent hitbox in front of you the entire time, you can also use it to stall yourself below the ledge with variable timing. You just grind against the stage wall and then anytime you flick up, you'll immediately activate the finisher. And on top of all of its innovative kill setups, it's also quite a powerful kill move just straight up. It's probably not the kind of thing you want to be going for raw all that often. You can, it does work as an occasional surprise. If you're not feeling nearly that brazen, it does actually work as a pretty solid tech chase option too. And Meta Knight has some moves that are very good at creating tech chases. Because of how far and how fast it travels, it can cover every tech option pretty comfortably. And hey, I said don't use it raw, and that's mostly true, but you know what? It's not even that unsafe on shield. So much nuance wrong out of what's supposedly a pretty simple tool. I'm not a Meta Knight player, but I love Drill Rush, and I've only grown to love it more over time. Moving on to what is legitimately quite a simple move, but one that I don't think gets its due. Lucas's up air. To this day, I maintain that Lucas has one of the overall most underrated toolkits in Smash, and you usually hear about stuff like his rope snake, his forward tilt. That's if you hear anything about Lucas at all, which is not often. But his up air is actually kind of nuts. Frame 7 start up with a disjointed hitbox for some reason, and shockingly low ending lag. This is in that Mario-esque camp of up air where Lucas can actually create ladder combos by himself even without getting a platform involved, and because he has that unique floaty double jump, it synergizes perfectly. And his landing leg is phenomenal. It's minus 3 on shield, that's about as safe as you're ever going to see most aerials be, that's cloud back air levels of safe. It's not nearly as easy to connect as, say, some of the sword fighters landing up airs, but if you do, hey. Free combo and it's low risk. And if all that wasn't enough, later on, Lucas's up air just kills people. It's a bit of a shame that he can't do down throw into up air like he could in Smash 4, which was one of the most reliable kill confirms even in a game absolutely stuffed with throw kill confirms, but that's the fault of down throw, which got nerfed. It's not up air. Yeah, nothing insanely fancy going on here, but as far as close range fighters up airs are concerned, this does pretty much everything you could ever ask it to do. Moving on to a different kind of upward coverage, me gunner's up smash. Well, I say upwards coverage, here's the thing. Before I started recording this video, I made my initial list, and then I made a Twitter thread asking people for suggestions. I didn't end up changing my mind too much this time around, but I was given this. We have built a temple to madness. This clearly takes heavy inspiration from Samus's up smash, it's essentially a carbon copy, but to be clear, 
Hers doesn't do that. It's used pretty much how you'd expect. It's for anti-airs and for platform coverage, and it's not even particularly consistent at it. The fact that Me Gunner fills that anti-air niche better to begin with, and scoops from further away than her disjointed tilt attacks? That's a lot. That's extra. I should also mention that the Twitter clip is a pretty extreme example, and I'm fairly certain there's some classic Smash Z-axis nonsense going on there, because for plenty of characters, this doesn't happen. But if you look it up Smash in more detail, it's still pretty impressive. I've spent a lot of time looking at hitboxes for this game. It's not often one catches me completely off guard, but uh, yeah, I didn't see that coming. Is it the greatest up Smash ever to exist? No, not necessarily. You know, it's still pretty committal. It's still a little on the slow side. And unfortunately, like her source material, a big sweeping side to side multi hit does introduce some consistency issues. But even just being able to use it out of shield, which is an important facet of many up smashes that Samus often can't take advantage of, that's a big step in the right direction. Well, I'm talking about Samus though, the next move here is her up tilt. At first glance, this move seems relatively unassuming, and you know, in some ways it is as an axe kick. It's not very fast. Still has a lot of good traits to it though. It goes very high. It can cover platforms quite easily. It covers all the way in front of her, and if she hits a grounded opponent, it leads into combos. If that grounded opponent puts their shield up, it's surprisingly safe if you space it properly. At the end of the day, it's still an upwards move though, so there's only so much it can cover... Wait, it beats ledge hang? No, in fact, it does more than that. With proper timing, this beats pretty much every ledge option straight up. It hits jump, it hits drop double jump, and it's a kill move on top of that. Between Samus's charge shot, which lets her cover ledge get up options with essentially zero risk, and bombs, which force opponents to get up with specific timings, she already has some of the most oppressive ledge trapping in the game. Up tilt, though, is that X factor. It's the glue that holds everything else together and makes getting off the ledge against her just a nightmare. It's especially synergistic with those bombs, though, because she can drop one above you to force you to get up, and then time her up tilt around it. There are a couple of options that you can go for to try and beat it. At certain spacings you may be able to roll behind her, at certain spacings you may be able to get up attack her, but even ignoring the fact that this isn't always true, she can still cover those spacings very easily and reliably with other options, so it really doesn't give her a lot to be concerned with. As a standalone up tilt, it's already not a bad move, but I think of every move in the game, it gets one of the largest power boosts based purely on synergy with the rest of her kit. And keeping the space theme going here, next up we have Falco's Neutral Air. This is just way more obnoxious than it has any right to be. It's frame 3. There's exactly one neutral air in the game that's faster than that and it belongs to Little Mac. This is the same speed as Mario's kick, same speed as Pac-Man's somersault, and only one frame slower than Falco's exceptionally fast air dodge, and frame 3 is as fast as a regular air dodge, which means it's perfectly viable to just mash this out of hit stun instead of air dodging. In fact, you're heavily incentivized to do that because this drags down, and the fact that it's so fast means it's also very viable to do this in regular combo setups when you're landing. It gets helped by having a surprisingly juicy hitbox with a bit of a disjoint on it. The fact that you have a big frame 3 neutral air that done landing leads into up tilt what else do you need? Up tilt is by far Falco's most famous move, and for good reason, it's the main thing that leads into his famous cutscene combo, so anything that can combo into that is worth considering, let alone when it's frame 3 and big. I've only been talking about the falling dragdown variant, though, using it more conventionally is still really good. And when you consider that Falco has the single highest double jump in the entire game, and that neutral air is a consistent multi-hit the entire way through, Falco being positioned below you when you're trying to get back to stage is terrifying. He can cover a ridiculous amount of space with unreal actable timing. There are plenty of persistent neutral airs with some kill power, but far more often than not, there's some timing involved because only part of the move will kill. It'll have a sweet spot, then a sour spot. In Falco's case, the sour spot drags into the sweet spot the entire way through the move, so you can just kind of throw it out and it'll work. Multi-hits always introduce some amount of inconsistency, but it's honestly not that bad here. And even at lower percents, the rising variant has some combos of its own, helped out quite a bit by how fast Falco falls and how low his short hop is. Coming into this, I was almost tempted to call it one of the best neutral airs in the game, and un sung hero, I can't quite do that purely because of this. I said it has a big hitbox, and that's true, but the hitbox is angled out from Falco's body and moves around a fair amount. The part of the hitbox close to his body, aka the part you want to be using out of shield, unfortunately, that's a bit on the stubby side, which means that, yeah, it whiffs way more often than you'd hope for, especially on shorter opponents or opponents who are low profiling. On taller opponents or moves that hit higher up, yeah, no problem, it's frame 3, that's fantastic for out-of-shield timing. If it was a consistent out-of-shield option, it would be an absolute nightmare, and it would get 
get talked about a hell of a lot more. As is, I can't call it a nightmare move, but the things it does do, it still does extremely well. Okay, going from a long line of veterans to a newcomer here, we have Piranha Plant with Jab. The plant gang shut up real quick after Piranha Plant came out. You don't really hear much about it at all anymore, and if you hear anything, it's about Patui, which, yes, is a pretty disgusting projectile. Jab is a lot more humble, but it's surprisingly good and a little bit weird on a character like this. It's frame 2, which is one of the absolute fastest jabs in the game, and feels almost a little bit out of place on Piranha Plant, who overall has pretty bad frame data. Case in point, Piranha Plant's neutral air is on the slow end of that kind of move, and that applies to his landing leg as well, so particularly on the drag down hitboxes, it can definitely struggle to get combos off of that. That is, if it didn't have jab, which is just so fast that it can reliably confirm into it out of a drag down neutral air, which is a nice perk, especially because Piranha Plant's jab is surprisingly rewarding on hit, mostly because of the Gentleman 123, which sends out a sharp angle and has very low knockback growth. These kinds of tech chases can be unreliable because in some instances your opponent can DI up to get out of them, and while you'll sometimes see quick animations bypass this just by virtue of being too fast to reliably react to every time, a jab 123, that's never gonna happen. Your opponent always gets to make an informed decision about where they're gonna DI, so yeah, it's not the absolute first choice for the kind of move you'd like to see this property tacked onto, but it's still not a property you're gonna be unhappy to see. And then later on, you're probably gonna switch to the rapid jab, which kills at high percents. Now, I'd be lying if I said it was the strongest killing jab on the roster, and if you're using it, something's probably gone wrong, but again, not something you're gonna be complaining about. And just throwing this out there, rapid jab locks opponents in place for a long time, and poison breath wants them locked in place for a long time, and piranha plant has one of those ultra spammy jabs you can just kind of hold out at the ledge and wait for opponents to get up into. After a lot of searching, I couldn't find any real world tournament examples of this setup, that's not to say they're not out there, and even if not, let's be real, there's so little hyper-optimized piranha plant footage out there to begin with that I wouldn't weigh it too heavily. Theoretically an option. Having said all that, even if none of the more rewarding stuff applied and it was literally just a frame 2 panic button, a slow character like piranha plant, you know what, they'll take it. The fact that it's useful enough to be a staple part of their game plan, that's just gravy. And let's just keep going with the jab theme here. Dr. Mario's jab. As you'd expect for an offshoot of Mario, this is a good, solid, dependable move. It's frame 3, pretty quick, does decent damage, sets up tech chases at mid percents, the first couple of hits aren't horribly unsafe on shield, you can go for some mix-ups with grabs and stuff like that. But that's all fine, none of that's why I'm talking about it though. Did you know you can do this? I just recently found out about that. Dr. Mario's up B is frame 3, and it's a really nasty kill move, and this is easy to do. I have awful reaction times, but there's so much hit lag after connecting the jab 1 that it's really effortless to react to it, and performing the combo is super easy just by abusing ultimate's buffer system, you just tap A, and then at any point, keep holding B and you'll get it. This is a window, it doesn't work at any percent, but the window is relatively generous, on Biolith it starts true comboing on the meter at exactly 103%, and on Biolith it stops working at exactly 146 at point blank. 145, and you can see there's a different animation. I love utility jabs, and I especially love jab cancelling, it's something that's always felt really satisfying and fun for me to pull off in Smash, but ultimate is not really a thing on most characters anymore. I knew about a few of them, but I just found out this year that Dr. Dr. Mario could join the club, a combination of having a pretty good jab one and a super fast killing special move. That's a relatively rare combo. Speaking of special moves, this next one has a bit of a different vibe than what I've talked about so far, but I think it's worth talking about anyways. Falcon Kick. This certainly isn't an obscure move, in fact, that's kind of the problem. It gets spammed so much by lower level Falcons that it's got a bit of a reputation for being a scrub move. So there's an interesting phenomenon that you see with a lot of moves, but it's really prominent with the Falcon Kick, where as players get better, they stop using it as much, but then when they get really good, they start using it again. Smash games tend to have a tempo to them, a rhythm that players fall into, and the beauty of burst movement options is that they can break up that rhythm, and at the end of the day, Falcon Kick is just a pretty good burst movement option. Your opponent can certainly be ready for it, but it's so fast and travels so far that if they're not prepared for it, it catches a lot of what they're doing. If they're short hopping, if they're dashing back, if they're dashing forward, if they're preparing an attack, Falcon Kick beats all of those from a pretty respectable range. And likewise, while an opponent who's prepared to punish it will generally be able to. If the Falcon Kick whiffs but your opponent didn't expect you to throw it out, there are still a lot of scenarios where they're just not going to be able to do anything about it. You can't really get combos or anything off it, so it's moderate risk, moderate reward, until your opponent gets to kill percent when you're not, when it then becomes moderate risk, high reward, because it's a kill move. Footstool Out of Shield has also been a major upheaval in Ultimate's high level meta over the last couple of years, and Falcon Kick pairs perfectly with it. Out of Shield options are something Captain Falcon can struggle with. His up special Falcon Dive, it is good in a lot of ways, it's high reward, can kill at high percents, it's very good at 
punishing leggy moves on your shield or if an opponent lands an aerial on your shield and then shields themselves because it's a command grab but a frame 14 startup with minimal range that's uh, that's rough there are very few aerials in the game that he can true punish with it and even a lot of grounded moves are safe his fastest aerials out of shield are up air and neutral air up air is not really doing much of anything you might intuitively think that neutral air would work a lot better it definitely looks that way but in practice it just starts up too high with too small a hitbox so it tends to whiff way more often than you'd want and even if that wasn't true it's still a frame 7 aerial which makes it a frame 10 out of shield option including the jump squat frames and that's still just not that impressive the vast majority of good aerials and ultimate are safer than minus 10 on shield there are some exceptions but there aren't too many this isn't going to be catching much ideal footstool out of shield though that's frame 4, which is really fast. The only thing that can beat that is an up special out of shield, and there are precious few of even those. The thing is, not every character has something they can actually do after a footstool, but Falcon Kick immediately halts all of his upwards momentum and sends him plummeting back towards the ground, so it's a very viable option for him. The other big issue with footstool out of shield compared to more conventional options is it's a bit finicky. If you're spacing your timing or a little bit off, you're not going to get it every time, and you don't really have room to react to the footstool most of the time, you just sort of have to go for it. Even if you do screw it up... Eh, you know, it's okay in a scramble. Definitely worth the risk of having access to a frame 4 out of shield option. It's no Falcon Punch or Knee of Justice, but the Falcon Kick's a relatively famous move in its own right, and I'm happy to see that it has so many surprisingly viable use cases in the meta. It's fun. Heading into the penultimate choice here, let's talk about Mewtwo's forward tilt. Elephant in the room, Mewtwo's tail hurt box sucks. And it means that while a lot of characters may get to use their tails more like swords, he doesn't. It's got a bit of a disjoint on it, but for the most part, this is more of a brawler move than anything else. Having said that, it is a hell of a brawling tool. It does basically everything you want out of a traditional forward tilt. The upward angle variant can be used as an anti-air, the downward variant can catch opponents hanging on a ledge, which means you can use it as a two-frame, and it overall comes to the table with a ton of range, even if some of that range is vulnerable. And Mewtwo makes very good use of that range, because this thing is strong. This is an excellent kill move. Surprisingly so. I feel like the animation isn't nearly brutal enough to convey just how much it hurts. When you combine that with Mewtwo's ridiculously fast ground speed, he can go from out of range to fishing for a kill move in the blink of an eye, and and doing it relatively safely too. Forward tilt is minus 15 or minus 16 on shield depending on the hitbox, so if you hit it at point blank range a lot of characters will be able to punish it, but if you do it from further away, most of the time you're clear. Forward tilts like this are usually safer than the frame data implies, and it's worth fishing for even at lower percents because it's also a great tech chase creator, and Mewtwo is really good at capitalizing on tech scenarios between that ground speed, how much his moves hurt, and also Shadow Ball, which hits like a giant truck all by itself, which means that when you combine it with forward tilt as a confirm, you're golden. The synergy between these two is fantastic. Shadow Ball combos into a lot of moves, but the consistency of those combos varies and the windows depend on stuff like percentage, charge level, and spacing. Shadow Ball into Disable is a thing, for example, but Disable is a relatively slow move, so therefore the combos are more specific. He has stronger confirms into stuff like Forward Air or into Dash Grab for an up throw kill, but those are moves that don't travel as far. Dash Attack is a move that also has good reach, but that one doesn't have quite the same kind of kill power that Forward Tilt does. It just checks all these boxes as a fast, ranged kill move that's still relatively safe even if his opponent gets the shield up in time, because there are scenarios where you're just essentially guessing how much frame advantage you're going to have. Almost time for the last choice. Before we get there though, I'm not going to do a bunch of honorable mentions because like I said there may be another episode of this at some point. I do want to talk about Mewtwo's jab though, which in another universe would have been the move I went with for him. I don't know why this thing's damage output is so high, especially if you trap your opponent at the ledge, but look at it. What else needs to be said? Well, okay, it's probably because it's frame 5, which is kind of slow for a jab, but hey, still good. Okay, final entry of the video, and I'm doing this to quash some nasty rumors that I've heard pop up way too much about my own character. It's Pitt's back air. Okay, here's the thing. I've heard this referred to as one of the worst back airs in the game many times over the years, and I just have to conclude people don't know what it does. The issue people always bring up is of course the fact that it's a kill move with a sour spot on it, and yeah, every now and then that can be a problem. Take a look at the hitbox though. That sweet spot is not a Marth tipper situation, that's actually really easy to land. Having a sour spot isn't even always a bad thing because it combos for a decent amount of time, and other than that, and the hitbox arguably being a bit on the skinny side, those are it. Those are the move's weaknesses. Everything else about it is nuts. Safety on shield? Minus three at the tipper, another one that's as good as cloud. Its sour spot is only minus four. Startup, 
frame 10, better than Cloud's. Range, there are longer sword disjoints in the game than it, but if you can't work with that hitbox, the problem's on you. Kill power, insane, and the pits use this a lot just raw. It's a great neutral tool, it's a great ledge trap tool, but on top of that, they have throw setups into it, which is such a rare luxury. As with a lot of horizontal kill confirms, this can be reliant on your opponent's DI, but that's not inherently a problem, and the pits actually suffer from it a lot less than many other characters. They've got a down throw that leads into kill confirms, and a forward throw that kills, or puts your opponent in a horrible position off stage, so how you're gonna DI against them is not particularly straightforward, especially because their throws are also both pretty quick and hard to react to. DI out at the wrong percent, you get caught by down throw back air and are just dead on the spot. DI in at the wrong percent, you die to a kill confirm with down throw into up air, or down throw into drag down up air into up smash. Can you really afford to DI out with how nasty forward throw is though? Uh, I mean, maybe. Or just back air by the way, there's a window where you'd survive up air but DIing in kills you anyways. Listen, if you've watched me for any amount of time, you know I'm not shy when it comes to complaining about the pits, but back air is not a move that deserves complaints about it. It's fast, it's safe, it's long ranged, it's disjointed, it combos, it kills, it enables kill confirms. And then when you combine that with pits multiple jumps, it's even pretty good in disadvantage state because you can turn yourself in the air hover above your opponent's head with ambiguous timing, and then land quite comfortably. If you're in the smash scene and someone ever tries to talk about how bad Pit and Dark Pit's back air is, just send them this segment because I'm done. I don't want to hear anything more about it after this. My one complaint, the only problem I have with this move, is that it should be even better on Dark Pit. Because he should have better aerials, and Pit should have better ground moves. Echo Fighters. Great feature, I love how much they capitalized on that. Thanks for watching everyone, and as a reminder, if you have any moves you think would be a good fit for a future episode, feel free to drop them in the comments. YouTube uses likes and comments to determine whether a video should be passed around to more people, so if you think this one deserved it, much appreciated. You can check out another Bach Rock Talk video here, video on Mock Rock below going over every single Pokemon as a Smash candidate, and patrons, YouTube members, and Twitch subs get perks like early videos and Discord access. Later people!